Hey, Scott. Good. Pretty good. I hear there's like a football, sports ball game or something, but I'm not paying any attention to it. So. Yeah. Well, I'm taping it, so I don't have to pay any attention yet. <laughs> <laughs> this, this show is way more interesting. Well, a friend of mine, a very close family friend, actually uh, encouraged me to call you, so I'm not going to give his name just to keep him uh, out of uh, the limelight at this moment. But, uh, yeah, he said uh, I should call you, so I took him up on, on the request. Okay. So. Well, we're, we're glad you did. What, what's, uh, you know, on the show we tend to talk about, you know, tell us what you believe and why, and I can see from the call screening thing that, you are a theist of some stripe and wanted to talk about why. Is that correct? Sure. Yes, so I'll try to be as brief as I can uh, as to how I became a theist. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. And if you want to ask me any questions, uh, I'm, I'll be transparent on my answers. Um, sure. I was pretty much raised in, in a non-religious household. We had Christmas, but Christmas was Santa Claus, and we had Easter, and Easter was, you know, the Easter Bunny. So I had the pleasure or whatever of just as a young kid, seven years old or whatever, looking at my surroundings and um, the various places in the U.S. where we moved to as we, as we moved around uh, with our parents and my siblings, and I just said, wow, I, li I love this place. I'm glad I'm here. I like life. I wasn't uh, a particularly gifted or, or auspicious kid. I was just normal. But as I was being normal and, and getting in trouble and, and breaking rules and enjoying life, I noticed that it seemed to me, uh, no one really needed to make an argument. It just seemed to me intuitively that uh, this place we call Earth wasn't an accident. And while at age seven, eight, nine years old, it wasn't like I, I felt compelled to talk to anybody about that perception. I just figured everybody else around me uh, observed the same and, uh, evidence, if you will, and made the same conclusion uh, from it. So um, fast forward to being uh, uh, in junior high and high school and of course, as you know, when you get to those ages, you kind of need to uh, write papers and take tests and take positions and debate things. And while still pretty much non-religious, um, I found myself uh, leaning uh, to the fact that somebody made this. This wasn't an accident. We didn't really talk about a Big Bang or a no non-Big Bang or Darwinism or or creationism. We I just looked at everything around me and said, this was put together by somebody who must love people and must love me. Um, I didn't particularly know or care who. I just was enjoying it. So, do, um, do you, then, uh, hey, hey Scott, sure. Do you think that's a good way to get to the truth? To look around and say, hmm, I just kind of feel like this is the case. Well, um, I, you know, I'm not much of a scientist. I'm not smart enough to be a scientist, but, but yeah, um, I observe things. Uh, you, somebody can tell me they're, they're an honest person, but if I observe that they lie uh, or hang their eyes all the time when they tell me something, then I'm, not, I'm going to observe that they may not be a truthful person. Well, Similarly, well, those are those are two uh, different things because if somebody tells you that they're you're, they're honest, and you observe their actual actions, and you have evidence then that they are dishonest, of course, that's not the same thing as looking around and saying, "Gosh, there must be some explanation for the why the world is the way it is." I can't think of anything better than somebody loves us and made it that way. I mean, th that's that's those two things aren't the same. You, you didn't have evidence of somebody actually making the world. You just decided uh, that that's kind of the way it is. Well, no, I, I had evidence of, even though I'll, I'll admit I haven't visited personally any of the other planets, I had, you know, pictures of from the moon to other planets as I grew up and also looking out into uh, other, uh, uh, other uh, solar systems, if you will, um, 
and and going, wow, those places look hot or, or cold or lonely. I, uh, I don't understand what that has to do. I don't understand what that has to do with how, how you, you went about reaching a conclusion that the earth was specifically created for you. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you think God created all those other things too? Um, I, as, a, as a kid, I really didn't contemplate that. So I'm, I'm telling you again as a, that, that my foundation of faith was more from observation and uh, uh, sort of rudimentary science. I didn't run any experiments. Yeah, well, there's, uh, the there's no environment was just doing its thing. That, that's you know, part of the butterfly. part of the problem, Scott, is that there's no experience. There's no experiments to be run on this proposition that there is, in fact, a God. My, it's my, impossible. It's what's impossible. It's impossible to run those experiments. So okay, I don't know that that's the case. I'm just unaware of any way to do it. But if you think it's impossible to run those experiments, how could you ever reach the conclusion that a God exists? and that this is a reasonable conclusion. Well, I didn't run any experiments. I, I, I know that. I, you, you just acknowledged, sure. Scott, Scott, you don't go back to the experiments. You just said it was impossible to run the experiments. Fine. I'm asking what method you used. I'm not saying you, you ran experience. What method did you use that reliably leads to the conclusion that God is an explanation for Earth? Uh, I, I observed uh, butterflies. I observed how they die and how they come back. Me too. I observed nature. Me too. Um, and I and I and I was amazed, uh, astonished. At uh, how observation. Things. I, I, I'm fine with observation, Scott. We all have observations. Uh, you are proposing a particular explanation for those observations, and I want to know what justification you have for saying that your explanation for those observations is correct. Well. You know the justification is you you must draw a conclusion. You must either draw you must either conclude that the things in nature that you see that you love that keep you warm that keep you that give you snow that provide water uh, that create little children and so on those must either be accidental or they must be purposed. No, uh, no, no, no. So, you, you are wrong at every possible turn of that sentence. First of all, you are not required to reach a conclusion in the absence of supporting evidence and reason. There is the possibility of saying, I don't know what the explanation is. As a matter of fact, that's most likely the correct answer until you can actually demonstrate it. Second of all, I asked, what was the justification? Why did you, for your explanation, why do you think that's correct? And you said that the justification was, well, you have to, to reach one conclusion or another. No, first of all, even if you were forced to reach a conclusion, that in and of itself doesn't mean that your conclusion is justified. It can't serve as a foundation for that. And finally, and finally, and I noticed this earlier, you were saying, I looked around at the world and think, and, and just can't believe that it's an accident. Therefore, the only other option is that there's a God who made it purposefully. That's a false dichotomy. Those aren't the only two options. And you are misunderstanding what science has to say about the formation of Earth and everything else. It's not mere accident. It's, it's not like, um, you know, a random throw of the dice. There are physical facts about nature and how it interacts. And so you have perhaps some randomness or some, something without intent. Just like if I start pushing a boulder at the top of a hill, I push it and it starts rolling. Um, there was an intent in me pushing it, but that boulder is going to go down that hill based on what it interacts with. Is there a bigger rock that it hits and stops? Is there something that moves it to the left, to the right? Does it get in a rut? Does it end up in a stream? It goes down there. These are all the laws of physics. And if you were to come down and say, ah, there's no way that this boulder ended up here instead of one of these other hundred locations, unless somebody was guiding it all the way down the hill, that would be erroneous. Uh, gravity is what I also discovered. Uh, as you you law, discovered uh, gravity? As I observed things. No, I didn't. Actually, Newton did. Uh, at least Newton is credited for I'm it. I'm pretty sure the first person no. who tripped discovered gravity, but... <laughs> but they didn't realize what it was. They didn't name it, of course. Yeah, I, but, what, what does no, it have I mean, to do with a god? There, uh, well, if there wasn't gravity, where would you and I be right now? I have no idea what the hell that means or what it has to do with well, a, a justification you're, you're, for God. Okay, 
I'm just, how far do you know how fast the earth is spinning uh, approximately uh, 900 miles an hour or so a little less i think okay okay yeah yeah i, I don't remember exactly but yeah something like that so I, I don't know how that's spinning, relevant to god either but go ahead well if it if it was spinning at at 20 miles an hour or double it at 2000 miles an hour pick any number you want do you sure. think that would affect our lifestyle uh, yeah, but I don't think that we are the intended purpose of the universe. So the thing you're overlooking is that life evolves to, fi to fit the, the situation that it finds itself in. I mean, you can adjust various things and talk about what life might evolve on different planets or how that might change the process by which uh, or, or the, the end results. So Douglas Adams had this quote about a puddle that a puddle of water that becomes sentient and starts looking around and says, man, you know, they, look at this, this puddle is, I mean, this, this, this hole in the ground is perfectly molded to fit me when in fact it's the water that fits to the hole in the ground, et cetera. Um, you, I, I'm asking what justification there is to believe in God. And so far, so far you've gone with, well, it can't be an accident. Well, that's not necessarily true. Well, I have to make one decision or another. That's not true. Well, I, where would I be without gravity? I, I don't even have a clue what the hell that has to do with the existence of a god. Um, and all, and what's well, the, how we, fast we is the can. earth rotating? How, well, can you, can, can if you, we didn't, if we didn't have gravity, to answer your question, if we didn't have gravity, we would be dead or wouldn't even be having this conversation sure. because we probably would have died before we grew up. Yeah, but what the hell does that have to do with anything? The, it means that gravity is an accident. Or no, some other explanation. Gravity, other gravity, explanation gravity be? is the label that we put on a, a a a fact about the physical universe. That objects are attracted to each other. That you know, on Earth, things fall at an acceleration of nine point eight meters per second squared, etc. We were able to quantify these things. Um, out there, let's say, where gravity doesn't affect things, like let's say there's an asteroid floating out there with some uh, bacteria on it. That bacteria is sitting there saying, wow, I'm glad we don't have gravity because that would ultimately change the, the environment that we're in and we wouldn't be here. See, that you're, what you're doing is you're looking at the situation, assuming that it was all made for you, and then going to the things and saying, oh, if we change this, I wouldn't be here. Well, get, so what? Who cares? What, what does that have to do with whether or not a god created anything? Something, something else would be here if gravity was vastly different. Then, you know, maybe another life form would be having the same conversation saying, oh, good thing gravity isn't any stronger. We wouldn't be here. You, you do realize there are things that live at the bottom of the ocean in, in and around vents so not only would the pressure kill you there, but the lack of oxygen would, would kill you there. And there's these poisonous, acidic uh, uh, chemicals there, and yet something lives there that's not you. Right? Right. Okay. Right. So now we're talking so about two completely different life forms, which are ultimately incompatible. You can't live where it lives, and it can't live where you live. Which, which one of those was the universe designed for, and how do you know? Well, I, I, you know, I would, I would suggest that there's a chance that the universe was designed for all, of, all of those, and oh. even the ones we haven't discovered yet. Sure. Okay. So you say there's a chance, but you've concluded that you have an explanation and that it's God, and I want to know why. Sure. Um, well, uh, so as an adult, I said, "What am I going to do?" I made the decisions that we all make, at least in the U.S. Uh, what am I going to do when I grow up? And so I decided that I wanted to take a particular uh, path of study. And while taking that, I was in college, and while I was in that path of study, I took my first philosophy course and loved it. Uh, there were questions I'd never, uh, and writers that I'd never heard of. Have you, have you taken a course on, debate them. have you taken a course, <laughs> have you taken a course within, within philosophy about logical fallacies? Yes. Okay. So, you, go ahead, continue, because I mean, that's baffling to me. Well, the, the, the understand that I'm a real person. I don't, I don't have a script. 
I don't have. I don't even have my glasses on. I, I'm a real I'm person. Don't I don't have a script, and I don't have my glasses <laughs> on either. What you for somebody who seems to who likes philosophy and claims they've taken a course on logical fallacies? Every time we get to to, to have a discussion, you bring up something that is utterly irrelevant. Um, well, it's relevant to me. Keep in mind. No, I, I care about what's relevant to the truth. I, I swear, Scott, I'm not being mean. I don't give a rat's ass what one individual thinks is relevant. I'm talking about whether or not something is true. And if you're arguing that you have a sound foundation upon which to believe that a God exists, and at every turn you offer up irrelevancies and fallacies, you are simply wrong. And if your well, response to... Yeah. Go ahead. And if, you're, if your response to someone challenging the reasonableness and the fallaciousness of a particular argument is to say, well, it's relevant to me, well, what difference does that make? Are you, are you saying that you have your own truth and you're not concerned with a truth that might be shared amongst other people? Uh, no, I, I am not saying that I am the, the ultimate uh, bastion or fountain of truth. I am saying that in my growing up as a youth and then as a young man, I went through normal questioning and evaluating of where do I come from and why am I here. Sure. And as I went, as I went through that, I, can, I also studied, not in detail, Clearly. but some, in some cases in detail, I studied the world's religions. I also studied many, 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 many philosophers. Okay. And I sat around with a, with a group. Uh, I joined a club, a philosophy club. We had a fancier name than that, but it was basically a philosophy club in college. And our leader, who was a professor, and, and the other doctoral professor, whatever his name, Mai Tai Kim, I think was his name, and then also Dr. Pretorius, uh, they sat around and basically had us, they facilitated as all of us students debated various things. And it was fun. But, but then one day I had an aha moment. I said, shoot. I'm sitting in a circle of maybe a dozen people and two very smart professors. I don't know what any of their worldviews are, because it didn't even occur to me to say, hey, what do you believe in, if anything? But they all differed on so many things. Yeah. And there were very few uh, logical fallacies, but many... Well, I'm not going to trust your ability to spot logical fallacies. Well, that's okay. I'm not asking you to. I'm just telling you that, that, that I went through that, and I went, holy cow, most of these people are smarter than I'll ever be. Therefore, I'm in a, a, a bunch of confused vibes here. i got to find something else. So I decided to check out some more formalized religions, and I checked them all out, um, studied them, almost joined one, but decided, nope, that one doesn't seem right. And then I eventually did a test that no one else can prove. Well, well let, me, let me just back up. So during all of this... Oh, uh, please don't, I don't. I really wish you wouldn't back up. I wish you'd get to the test, because I, I really want to get to a okay. bunch of callers, and you're like, okay. you just got to the point that I was most interested in, which is, <laughs> okay. hey, I've got to figure this out, so I'm going to do a test. Sure. Yeah. What was sure. the test? And you're going you're gonna to say the test is coincidence, okay? But, but I'll tell you what happened. So I'm in college... I have, a, I have a sickness. It's not a fatal sickness, but it's a serious sickness. And I wanted to have fun my senior year, and it was taking me down. And I'm, oh, geez. So I basically told no one, but I finally said, okay, God, you know I've been with you all these years, not in a religious way, but just, you know, when I had a fight with my girlfriend, I would talk to you. I would, I would praise you and sing songs to you as I was you know, walking on a beach or something and say, wow, God, the moon is really pretty. That was my religion, me and God, okay? Nothing formal. And then, and then I go, but God, every, all these people on my college campus keep telling me about Jesus. And, and I don't know that I suppose he's a historical figure, but is he really your son? Is he really someone who died on the cross and on purpose uh, was sent here to do that for us? I just said, I just, I just, I don't know that I can go there, God, but here's what I'm going to do. I believe in you, but 
I'm going to test you to see if you want me to believe in Jesus. And so I said, okay, God, I want you to heal me from this sickness. It's gone on and on and on. And um, I'm going to the doctors. I'm getting doctor's care. It's not any better. Uh, but will you heal me from this? I to- and I told no one. And so I went uh, about once a month I would go in uh, to be- have a blood test. And every uh, blood test was, uh, you know, the white count was not good news. Um, I'm not a medical guy, but it was not good news. And so I went in for my monthly white count test, um, and the, uh, the doctor said, well, it's still bad news. Well, the next day, the woman uh, in, in charge of the lab called me and said, uh, you're better. And I said, well, uh, you must have the wrong guy because I feel as bad as I did yesterday when I was in your office. And she said, well, you're better. Uh, you've turned the corner. You're better. And she was right. It, it was even though I, my body was still exhausted and, I, and the sickness was gone. Okay. So that, that, honestly, I forgot about that for about six months conveniently. What? But I remembered. What? But I remembered. Yes, Come I'm on. Telling. All right. Now, now, Scott, this conversation has gone on, and I promised quick conversations. This, this one's gone on for like probably 20 minutes or so. And we asked why you believe in God. And we finally get to this sure. point where you, you say, hey, the, the big reason I believe in Jesus is because I had a sickness and I prayed for God to heal me, and he did. Uh, except I forgot about it for six exactly. months. Exactly. Now, now, how the you hell do you forget that. about that for six months? But, but second of all, Scott, were you on medication at the time? No. No medication. So you were going to see doctors, and they no. weren't, weren't treating you at all. No, no, not for this. No, not for this. There was not. There was not something. Anything they wanted me to to take for it. So, so, so you have a serious illness, and and they're yeah. just. So it's like those commercials. That's, that's like, hey, I'm not a dentist who's going to fill your cavity. I'm just monitoring to tell you you have a cavity. That's what these doctors were doing. No, no, no. You, you'd go in, and they serious, they'd just say, not, "Yep, you're still sick. Thank, here, give us your money." Okay, no, so, so we'll go ahead and say you weren't on any medication. Are you aware that some, some illnesses go into remission? Uh, yes. Okay, sure. how did you rule that out? Because I never got, I never got, I only got better. I never got worse. Okay, that's what, that's remission, I, that's what remission is. If, you're, if you say you're aware that illnesses no. go into remission, and, and, and your illness went into remission, how did you determine what the cause of that remission was? The, 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 How did the you determine medical, that it was the prayer? The blood, I'm telling you, the blood, the woman called The me, blood is irrelevant. Uh, the blood, is, said, the, Scott, the no, blood, no, no. Scott, hang yes, on, no, hang you on. hang on. Science. You hang on, Scott. The bl- Scott, said, for Christ's sake, t- I put you on hold. The blood is irrelevant. I will accept that your blood improved. I'm asking, how did you determine that the cause of the remission was your prayer to Jesus? Uh, the cause of the, rem- of the are you still there? Yes. The cause of the rem- remission was because I prayed, and even I'm asking, that, how did you determine that that was the cause? Because of the because the blood test, the white cell count <sighs> went radically different. What the hell does that have to do with the cause? The fact that because okay, the white, the white cell count is what why. Is evidence. What you're saying, Scott, Scott, what you're saying is the cause of the remission was the prayer. And the way that I know that is that the white count changed. And, and what we're really talking about is what was the cause of the change in the white count? And you're saying it's the prayer. And I'm saying, how do you know it's That's the prayer? That's exactly right. How do you know it's the prayer? Yeah, like I said before I gave you this. Like you said, nothing. We're done. If you're just going to go back to like you said, you do not understand logical fallacies. You should have paid more attention in that course. Because the issue here is something happened. And now the question is, what was the cause of this thing? Causality is significant. And you're saying, oh, I got better, and it's because I prayed. And when I ask how you made that causal connection to I prayed, and I got better, and the prayer was the reason, you say, well, the white count changed. Oh, yes, the white count change was the cause of you getting better. What was the cause of the white count change? Oh, it was the prayer. How do you know that? What reason do you have to reach that conclusion? You don't have any. We're back to where we were at the beginning of the call, which is why I went ahead and ended it. 
That's where a- you looked around and you saw, hey, well, this can't just be an accident. And so I'm convinced that somebody loves me and did this for me. It was kind of the same thought process as exactly. You know, he didn't. He already believed in God when he did the prayer to to get healed, um, and the explanation for that was pretty much the same as the explanation for believing God when he was younger. It's you know, I saw the butterflies, and therefore somebody must have created it. I got better, therefore the prayer must have done it. But I think you know if. If you did take all those philosophy classes, they they had to have covered correlation does not equal causation somewhere in there. That's pretty basic philosophy 101. So, and post hoc ergo propter hoc, which means after this, therefore because of this. The mere fact that you prayed before you got better doesn't mean the prayer is why you got better. Um, so you predicted correctly that we would be more likely to attribute that to a coincidence than to, to your prayer. I, I'm actually... Uh, I have, I have no explanation for why what you claim happened happened. You know what else? I also don't have any evidence that what you claim happened actually happened. You know, you, you'd need... I, I'm wondering why, um, and, I, and I don't know that this isn't the case, but I'm wondering why you aren't part of a, a serious study on whatever illness you had. Now, perhaps your case is in there, and your case ends up being uh, the anomaly that nobody can explain. Uh, but you know what happens when... Uh, the experts in the field view your case as the anomaly that there's not an explanation for, that means you are demonstrably unjustified in saying, oh, no, 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 I know how it happened. I know it happened because I trusted Jesus. You know how many times people have trusted a particular religious figure or attributed the prayer to their religion, and then something happened, and then they say, oh, that's because of this. I mean, we had somebody call in last, last week or the week before talking about uh, they're convinced because every time they said this dead person's name, shit would fall off the walls. I, I mean, and, then, and then when they say every time, uh, once. This happened once, they didn't bother testing it again. You know, if we're going to try and figure out uh, and make a case for a particular religion, and, and we have, by the way, we have tested prayer with regard to intercessory prayer and illnesses. You know what we find? It works at the exact rate of chance unless the people who are being prayed for know that they're being prayed for, and then it works even less. That's the best findings from the Templeton Foundation study that was hopefully going to demonstrate that, you know, some prayer works. You know what? It doesn't. Uh, And you're in a situation where you have, you're a single individual with a single occurrence, and, yep, yep, that's how I'm justified. I'm reasonably justified in believing that this is the case uh, because it's relevant to me. I, I can't possibly buy that. 